Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Karen here for Ozone Fine Art Ventures and we are live. We're gonna sort some rocks and... Wait, what? It's time to call the makers to action. Makers, assemble! And we were on our run and this like eagle shot past us and went scree, which loosely translated is, do you accept the maker's challenge? And of course we say scree back, which means I accept. Time for the maker's challenge, an opportunity to stretch the limits of creativity and imagination. Does that mean I get to play with fire? It means it's time to throw down the crucible. Is it a bathtub for a trilobite? This is no bathtub or nut container, but a vessel that will contain molten metals that we sincerely hope will be doing our bidding. In order to use this crucible to meet our maker's vision, we need to cure it to strengthen its ceramic form. This is done with a heavy dose of fire. To further prepare this crucible, you add borax that melts into a glaze and that prevents the melting metal from sticking to the walls of the crucible. <laughs> so what you want to do, is just get a big pile of silver and eyeball it in proportion to the size of the container that you have and call it good. <laughs> Actually, we'll take scrap silver that I've accumulated and weigh it so we know how much it takes. But for what? So what do we need the melty metal for? Well, here we are at the beach. I thought it would be fun to play in the sand. I've always wanted to try sand casting, and this challenge was the perfect excuse to do it. Do it. The first step is chopping the sand. In this case, I'm actually using Delft clay. It comes in a bag pretty compressed, plus there's oil added to it, so it's rather clumpy to begin with. Taking the clumps out helps to ensure a better packing for our casting form, and packing is what comes next. We shove the clay into a special casting cylinder. I found the next step very stress relieving and therapeutic. We get to hammer the clay into the cylinder to pack it really tight. The tighter the clay, the better the casting. Here we can clean up the top to prepare it to receive the thing we'd like to cast. My oh my Karen, what impressively large hands you have. Steve jumped in for the collaboration to mash up the next batch of clay. We repeat the packing and perfecting of the other side of the cylinder, same as the first, for the second side of the casting mold. Okay, it's ready for its very first ever victim. How about my wedding ring? Seems simple enough. Who loves dental tools? Well, not when I'm at the dentist actually, but these are some of the nicest tools that you can come by for this kind of job. Another great tool for this turns out being a used gift card. That gift that keeps on giving. It's the perfect size to clean up the inner cylinder. The halves of the mold fit nicely together with the ring tucked inside and we give it a good hammering for the other side to pack it around my ring. I should add, when I place the ring on the first side, I put it in about halfway down in the depth of the ring. The second half of the ring will be in relief on the second half of the mold. That funnel looking ditch that I carved out next to the ring is the runner. It actually does funnel the hot silver down into the mold. 
When we pour that melty metal into the hollow space where the ring was, the air needs a place to exit. I'm carving out an escape route that leads outside the mold. Both sides match each other, except for the air escape hatch, so we'll put them together and see how this goes. With the price of silver on the rise, recycling bits from the fabrication jewelry process that I love to employ is a total win. So what do we got going on here? Uh, we're... I don't understand any of this. Casting, man. Seems dangerous. Yeah. Whoa. You can now see why we cured that crucible. It really has to handle a lot of heat stress. In fact, we're warming up this sterling silver to over 890 degrees Celsius, or over 1,763 degrees Fahrenheit. When working with fine silver, you even have to go hotter with 961 degrees Celsius. You could say we're cooking with fire at this point. The silver is turning molten and it's really pretty to watch. My heart is beating fast though. I don't want to hiccup or drop my project at this juncture. The first pour is a learning experience. You saw how hot that silver was, but it wasn't hot enough. The chunks are still left there in the sprue channel, and the ring only hit about 11 o'clock. We can reuse the silver for the next meltdown, and it looks like we should add more. But time's a wasting, and the maker's deadline draws closer. One element we left out of the first try was the talc that you can apply to help the clay from sticking to your subject in the mold. We're going to add more silver to lend extra weight to the flowing silver to drive it into the channel of the ring. Look at what a pretty glaze that makes. Boy, if I was a ceramic artist, I'd be all over that color. How pretty. But what we're more interested in is how this turned out. So I think that it is cool enough to take out of there and see if it worked. Okay, time for the reveal. Did it work? It's still warm, but not, not so much so that I believe I'm gonna get burnt. I really like this format for the, uh... oh no, it didn't go all the way through. <laughs> I was gonna say, I really like this format for this, um the mold, they come in two, two flavors, uh, the side load and one that you pour in the top and the silver has to come around the corner. So maybe not hot enough still? I think you poured it too fast. Yep, pour it a little slower? Yeah. All right. I 
I think one of the coolest things about this clay is that it is totally reusable. You just have to remove the burned clay each time and repack your voids, but then you're right back to the races. What do you think? You need a bigger ring. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so close. Okay. What is this number 5? I think this is poor number five. So, let's hope that this reveal is revealing something wonderful. And it is. Look at that. We got a ring. Woo! We can clean this up later in the jewelry studio. Finally, with a little success from Steve's ring, we tried casting a Miocene era gastropod fossil shell. That's a mouthful. It made sense that we got this one on the very first try since it was one simple void to fill. I'd suggest starting with something easy like this. I'll show you how I prepared this fossil with the next subject. Here we have another fossil shell that we found on one of our local beaches. You guys were probably all wondering when a rock item would actually enter this maker's challenge, right? My idea here, which I've been mulling over for quite some time, is to carve out the shell from the concretion so that we cast just the cross section of the shell. We're back into some tricky territory with a few rather thin sections of this shell. What a glutton for punishment. But this was the vision, so we're going to chase this gastropod through the sand with some silver. We've learned some better techniques with the failures on the rings. You want to make sure all the channels you'd like to fill are not only large enough to encourage flow, but also free of any loose sand that can clog up the works. It also seems like you can't have too many air holes, so we're preparing this one generously so it's got plenty of room to breathe. Have failures? Just melt them down again. Even the sprues that you saw off your projects are reusable. Oh wow, that was really close. Look at that. Darn, just the crown. There's obviously plenty of trial and error with this process. There are safety measures to take too, like personal protection gear, safe surfaces for heat, and having a fire extinguisher nearby for sure. But then you hit it. Beautiful, unabashed success. I have to say, it's pure exhilaration and somewhat poignant to melt down failure and have something beautiful and full of potential emerge. What would you do with it? Leave it in the comments. Or what would you like to cast? I would love to hear. This just gets cooler and cooler as we clean it up. But what are we going to do with it now? I mentioned sawing the sprue off earlier. Here we're removing that funnel of silver to be used again in a future project. We'll remove as much of the extra silver from the casting with the jewelry saw as possible for reuse. There's quite a bit of cleaning up this casting requires. With a tungsten burr, I'm getting into the nooks to grind off silver that accumulated in the pockets. We'll have this casting resembling the original in no time. Silicon sanding wheels also work a dream on this project. A little filing action on the fine silver setting and under the torch you go. This shell sure has seen a lot of fire. Out of the pickle acid and this piece of sterling loveliness is looking ready to finish. Okay, well maybe a sulfur bath first. I love that darkness. 
Now it's ready to polish, but there is still something missing. Oh yeah, this is a rock challenge. How about a sunstone that we collected and I freshly faceted? That puts the cherry on top of this vision. Another special burr prepares the setting for the gem, though I'm not sure which is the gem at this point. Working the bezel around and polishing pretty well wraps it up just in time. Here's our first fossil shell we worked, found on a local beach and sand cast. It seems fitting. We decided to set a peridot in it, that lively green reflecting the spirit of the living creature that left us a reminder of itself to find when time. I think one of the coolest things about this method of casting is its imperfections. The fact that the sand allows for organic happenstance, it's refreshingly natural in its finish. And that graceful form of the fossil shell's inner structure, we carved from the matrix to reveal the ascending spiral. A sunstone within seemed the perfect addition to set in the pocket of time. There's something about taking something ancient, manipulating elements like fire, to pour a metal into sand, and creating an echo of that ancient entity, to preserve it further, holding its inherent beauty to wear, to remember with gracious fondness. Oh, how we love our fossils and rocks. This has been a terrific Maker's Challenge. Thank you, Theo Kellison, for the invite and the inspiration to venture into the frontier of creativity. Make sure to check out the other Maker's Challenge videos and the awesome channels that are involved. The list will be in the description. Most importantly, we'd like to thank you for watching and coming on this adventure with us. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this. We'll surely be doing more sand casting to come. Plus, there's always more at ozonefineart.com. Though, I'd like to invite you to try a maker's challenge of your own. Why should we have all the fun? Cheers, and keep creating.